In this video, I'm going to destroy five myths that you currently believe about iodized salt. There's a lot of misinformation out there. Getting enough iodine is very, very important for your optimal health. And I'm gonna tell you at the end of this video how you can ensure that you're getting enough iodine in your diet, but I can promise you right now, you're not getting enough from iodized salt. Myth number one is that all the packaged foods that you eat, the junk food all the way to the health food, the salt that's in that packaged food contains iodine. That just seems like it. common sense. There are federal guidelines that there should be iodine in salt, but no, guess what? The vast majority of packaged foods, ranging all the way from super healthy packaged foods all the way to abject junk contain un-iodized salt. There's no iodine in that salt. They do this because un-iodized salt is, guess what? Cheaper. They're trying to save some money and there's no federal mandate that that salt be iodized, so therefore it is not. Myth number two, the salt that you have in the restaurant on your table that you put on your restaurant food, that's surely iodized, right? No. The vast majority of salt on the restaurant tables is unidized. There's two reasons for this. Number one, I'm going to let you guess, it's cheaper to use unidized salt, but also unidized salt has a better flavor profile. And since restaurants want their food to taste as good as possible, they use unidized salt. So in both of those first two situations, packaged foods and restaurant, if it doesn't specifically say that the salt is iodized, then it most assuredly is not iodized. Myth number three, the specialty rock salt that you buy or the sea salt that you buy and you pay a premium for, that surely has to be iodized, right? Uh, no, there's no federal regulation for specialty salt to be iodized and it's cheaper not to put iodine in salt. So therefore, you guessed it, it's cheaper not to add the iodine so that they don't do that. And this goes all the way from any of the uh, kind of boutique evaporated salts that, you know, ocean salt that came from this pristine bay in Jamaica or up here in, in Seattle or Washington. None of those salts are iodized. Now, what about rock salt, like Redmond's and other rock salts that are mined from deep underground? They don't contain any iodine, mean, a meaningful amount of iodine naturally, and they also don't add iodine to that salt. So unless you're just buying Umbrella Girl salt, there's no iodine added to the salt that you're eating. Myth number four, the recommended daily intake, the RDI for iodine and iodized salt is all that you need. So the federal government mandates that there be 45 micrograms of iodine per gram of salt in iodized salt. And if the salt you buy for, for your house doesn't say iodized, then there's no iodine in it because it would cost that company money and they would brag about there being iodine in their salt. Now the RDI currently in the United States is that adults should get 150 micrograms of, of iodine per day. But if you're pregnant or lactating, breastfeeding, you need more than that. That's not enough for you. You need to go out of your way to get more iodine. If you're pregnant, you need to get at least 220 micrograms a day. And if you're breastfeeding, you need to get at least 290 micrograms a day. Now, you would just assume, that this is another myth, that the RDI is all the iodine you would need. No, that is incorrect. The RDI was set to keep you from developing a goiter, a swollen thyroid. This used to be endemic in many parts of the United States. Everybody in a community would have a big fat goiter or enlarged thyroid because they weren't getting enough iodine. The RDI was set just enough so that you don't develop a goiter. It was in no way set to optimize your health or to give your body all the iodine that it needs. I've got many other videos on this channel about iodine and how much you actually need in what all body parts. It's not just your thyroid gland that needs iodine. Every single cell in your body needs that. Now, myth number five, the table salt that you buy at home and use at home that says iodized salt on the label, that contains as much iodine as you need. First of all, you're going to have to eat a certain amount of that salt in order to get enough iodine not to develop a gorder. 
and that amount is 3.3 grams of salt of iodized salt. Uh, you have to, that's roughly a, a six tenths of a teaspoon. You have to eat that much each and every day of your iodized salt at home in order to get enough iodine to keep from developing a gorder or thyroid nodules. That's not to optimal, optimize your health, that's just to prevent a gorder or nodules. But here's the kicker about your iodized salt at home. There's this funny thing that iodine and salt does called sublimation. What this means is, is that the iodine in your salt can go from a solid to a gas, bypassing the liquid phase. Now, there's an example that probably most of you guys have seen before. If you've ever bought something that, that came shipped with dry ice, you know how dry ice is a solid. You put it in your sink, and then this, this fog comes off of it for a while, and then it's gone. It never turns into a liquid. That's sublimation. Your iodine and your iodized salt can do that as well. Typically, when the iodized salt is manufactured, it sits around in the factory for about a month, sublimating the iodine out. Then transportation and storage is another one to three months during which sublimation is occurring. Then your iodized salt can sit on the shelf at the supermarket for another one to six months. Then you get it home and you put it in a glass container with holes in the top called salt shaker and it sits on your table for months and months and months. The only way to prevent sublimation from happening to prevent the iodine from coming out of the salt is to have the salt in an airtight container. The salt cannot be exposed to light and the temperature must be strictly controlled. Now, you can understand that in the factory, it's not temperature controlled. Definitely during the transportation on a truck or a cargo ship, the climate is not controlled. The hotter the salt gets, the more sublimation happens. It's also not transported in airtight containers so sublimation is actually happening. Just imagine a hot transport truck and the, the, all the iodine is leaving the salt. So we can only estimate how much iodine is sublimated out of your table salt before it actually gets to your table. And then also most people are trying to eat a low salt diet, right? Because their doctor, their cardiologist, their mama has told them to eat a low salt diet. And so they're trying to cut back. So they don't eat 0.6 grams of salt a day from their iodized table salt. So the vast majority of people in the United States and indeed in many, many parts of the world are deficient in iodine because they're depending on their salt in packaged foods, in restaurants, uh, salt on their table that's been sitting around for a year, exposed to light at higher temperatures and exposed to the air. You're never gonna get enough iodine like that. So what do you do about this? Well, there's two ways to remedy this. One is you can eat iodine-rich foods. And I actually have a YouTube video about iodine-rich foods, which will pop up about right there towards the end of this video. And you can focus on eating a serving of these iodine-rich foods several times a week. That'll, that'll get you enough iodine. The other way to get enough iodine is to use a supplement like J. Crow's, Lugol's, 2% or 5% iodine. I don't have an affiliation with them. I don't make a penny off this recommendation. It's just the iodine I've been supplementing with for almost 20 years now. Now, if you're saying, well, I thought that iodine was just for your thyroid. I didn't know that other cells and tissues and organs in your body needed it. Yeah, they do. At the end of this video, a video is gonna pop up right here that tells you why it's so important for you to get iodine every single day of your life. Oh, here's a little spoiler alert. If your doctor or anybody in a position of authority, authority has ever told you that you're allergic to iodine, that's a lie. That would be myth number six. There is no human being on planet Earth who is truly allergic to iodine. That would be like being allergic to water or being allergic to air. It is not possible. I'm not saying you didn't have a reaction to something, either seafood or contrast dye, but it was not the iodine. So check out these two videos and learn more about iodine because it's very, very important for your overall health, for your optimal health, for you to be the you that you really want to be. Hope this video helps. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.